Hey church, welcome back as we are looking into the life of Joseph. Trust you're having a brilliant new year and it's exciting to be able to be with you on this particular day in January. January the 5th, our second last day that we have together in this particular series. Looking at Joseph, looking at dreams. We talked yesterday about the power of contradiction. Today I want to encourage you that accusation works for you. In chapter 37 verse 19 of Genesis, they say about the brothers say about Joseph, here comes that dreamer. And when you read the story, you can feel the venom, sense the hatred that the brothers had towards him. I wonder if you've ever uh, been despised because of a dream. If not, then you probably never had a dream. A dream by nature is something that you can, that you can see that others can't see. A dream is something that needs explaining and understanding. I wonder if you've ever woken up after a dream and thought, what was that? I mean, it was your dream, but you had no idea what it meant. And yet often we can get upset when we verbally share our dreams for life with others and they respond with, what is that? That's exactly what happened with Joseph. We don't know if he really understood his dream, but his brothers and father declared, what is that? Here comes the dreamer. It's an insult derogatory, a put down, but. Later on in the story, in chapter 40, we find this amazing scenario. Each of the two men, the cupbearer and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were being held in prison, had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Chapter 40, verse 8, we both had dreams, they answered, but there is no one to interpret them. Then Joseph said, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. In verse 12, this is what your dream means, Joseph said. In verse 18, this is what your dream means, Joseph said. The chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph. He forgot him. Look at this in verse chapter 41. Now, Joseph has been in prison. He's just shared what people's dreams meant, the cupbearer and the baker to the king. Now in chapter 41, when two full years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. So here's the thing. It's crazy. Joseph is in prison through no fault of his own. He's been called a dreamer with venom by his brothers. He's interpreted the dreams of two people in prison. And now he's been forgotten for two years. But get this. Chapter 41, when two years had passed, Pharaoh had a dream. Verse 8, in the morning his mind was troubled, so he sent for all the magicians and wise men of Egypt. Pharaoh told them his dreams, but no one could interpret them for him, because he needed a dreamer. Then the chief cupbearer said to Pharaoh, Today I am reminded of my shortcomings. Pharaoh was once angry with me, his servant, and he imprisoned me and the chief baker in the house of the captain of the guard. Each of us had a dream the same night, and each dream had a meaning of its own. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard. We told him our dreams, and he interpreted them for us, giving each man the interpretation of his dream. So, Pharaoh sent for Joseph, chapter 41, verse 14 to 16. Pharaoh sent for Joseph, and he was quickly brought from the dungeon. When he had shaved and changed his clothes, he came before Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, and no one could interpret it. But I have heard it is said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. I cannot do it, Joseph replied to Pharaoh, but God will give Pharaoh the answer. Here's what I want you to see. His accusation was his savior. The very thing that he was accused of, here comes the dreamer in a derogatory way, was the very thing that actually saved him when he needed it. The very put down of his dream became the very thing that elevated him in the moment that he needed to be elevated. So I want to ask you this about your life and your dream. What have you been accused of on your dream? Arrogant, proud, far-fetched, bit too big? I don't know. But here's what I do know. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 8-10, Paul says, Three times 
I begged the Lord to take it away from me. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and the insults, the hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Friends, you will always have people who try to belittle your dreams. But if you stay faithful in the small things, faithful to others, faithful to God, and keep your motivations pure, the very thing that people are using to put you down with will become the very thing that God can use to set you up. Your setback is a setup for the dreams of God to come to pass in your life. Don't get angry. Don't get even with people. Learn to love, learn to forgive, and watch what God will do. Have an absolutely blessed day. Love you, church. See you for our last devotion tomorrow. God bless you.